Welcome to this look at new mods on Farming Simulator 19 with me, Mr. CLEP. It's Wednesday the 7th of July. We have some new mods. We have some updates. I'm also going to do the three mods that popped up yesterday because I didn't get a chance to do them. So the updates are as follows. Spectacle Island by Alien Jim has had its second update. Almost a farm by Kaz64. I think the update on that has gone from six crop types up to nine on that one. The Seppi Maxi Soil 350 by Black Eyes Modding. The JCB TM320E by ER Shabba Toy Mateo VSR Modding Sur. The Lizard Sadie by Mantrid. The Barn Package by, by Farmer 5 Tom. The Pack of Small Buildings by Bar T. The Pack of Three Houses by Viavox. And the Lizard Diesel Tank 2000 by Sloitches Modding have all had updates today. Now those updates are just today's updates. Uh, I haven't put yesterday's in there as well for the updates. But I am, like I say, I am going to do the mods. Weirdly, the mods I'll be showing the Vale Grain Giant as a new mod today. I think the only thing with that is it's got approval to use the name, the Vale name. Because I reviewed the, the Grain Giant or a little while ago. I can't remember what it was now. But it's not showing on the Mods Hub as being new today. So... That was that's worth bearing in mind. Right, we have got the tractor mailbox, 0 0.29 megabytes download, one slot on console by MK Customs. You'll find it under placeables and decoration. 250 to buy. It's a placeable mailbox. Decorative item by MK Customs. Next, we have got the Flegel ASW261 by Smetty. 8.56 megabytes download, 10 slots on console. We've got a few variations on this, I think. I'm trying to think now. We've got an 18,000 litre, a 19,000 litre, and a 22.5. But also, we can have it in... Oh, I should have gone that way around. We can have it in a muck spreading variant as well. There's a few different decal options, as you can see. We've got the black edition panther version there's a few different color schemes available nicely made mod it's not huge doesn't take up a lot of room unlike the flegal balls and those kind of things there's no rear trail hitch so you can't daisy chain these together or anything like that probably because you can have it as the muck spreading version as well so this you'll find under tools and trailers i think it was so 35 grand for the base model Requires 120 horsepower. We can change the main colour. We've got a stainless steel, a galvanised steel, a steel. Then there's the black version, Alutec. I quite like that actually. And then the Alutec green. Design colour, green to match, blue or white. What's well, a kind of whitish grey? I guess. Then, like I say, capacity 18,000 litres, 19,000 litres, or 22,500. Now, if you go for the full 22,500, it doesn't make it a silage trailer. It will still take everything that it says it will take. Um, so those are the three size options. Then you've got the manure spreader option on the back. The muck spreader option is only an 18, say only, it's an 18,000 litre. And it will spread out to 12 metres. Then we have got options on a Trelleborg, Michelin and Lizard. Under Trelleborg, we've got standard or wides. Under Michelin, we've got standard or wides. And then under Lizards, we've got standards. Then you've got design one, design two. Now these go through a whole load of options with regards to mud guards, mud flaps. Then we go to three, which puts the plastic ones round, which means you don't need the ones on the back anymore, the flappy ones. Uh, then you've got four, which puts them on the back, but gives you a, a box at the front. Then you've got an impact protection panel on the side. Then seven, eight, nine. It goes through a whole load of different options. Back to design one. Then we've got lower attacher or high attacher type, depending on what you're pulling it with. Then design, we've got standard. The Panther. Taurus. Alutech. Back to standard again. So those are the options on the actual trailer itself is a push unload L1, R1 and triangle slight lift push unload so no tipping handy for those sheds, barns, buildings that kind of thing 
that don't have a lot of headroom headspace. And then what we'll do, we'll take the muck spreader version, we'll just whiz out to the field very quickly. So very quickly, it's taking a little while to get going. L1 and X opens it up ready for operation. So it makes it a versatile trailer, very handy to use, and the fact you can switch it to a muck spreader as well. Not too bad at all, that. So there we go, that's the Flegel ASW261. From there, we're going to switch to this, the Lizard Meteor. This is a Viagra Tonio, 15.14 megabytes download, 16 slots on console, nice looking lorry cab. Quite a few different options on this one as well. So we'll crack on with those. Under trucks. 142 grand for the base model, 460 horsepower. We can change the main colours, anything on that palette. We do have selections with standards. Then we've got the ruby reds, like new aged is the satins. They're more of a flat finish or a gloss finish. There's a few to choose from, so anything on that palette. We'll leave it on. Go that. Yeah. Then rim colour. Again, we can switch it up. So, for example, I'll go for the rims like that. Then design colour. Let's go for a yellow that stands out. Is the hubs. So you've got rims and hubs. So you can mix and match between all three. Then we've got beacon light and climate control. Air conditioner one, air conditioner two. Now these just switch between the different colours we've got available. So it's going between the main colour, the hub colour. Does it do the rim colour as well? No, air conditioner four. Then beacon light, if you'd rather that instead. Which I think is what I went for, then back to standard. Then we've got wheel brand. You've got secondary colour, primary colour, which we've already chosen the hub colour. I'm not quite sure why it gives you another option to change those again. But you can if you want to. Uh, then we'll set up. We've got standard. Uh, again, this sort of changes the outer part of the hubs. Black front, black rear. Back to standard. Side cover, yes or no. Then design, standard. Deflector, deflector 2. Deflector, or sorry, aerofoil. Then full. So you've got the aerofoils down the side and the deflector on the top. Back to standard. Attaches. Now this isn't actually attaches. This is actually for a sticker across the front. So you can have a black sticker or a white sticker, say Meteor, or not at all. Then it gets a bit confusing. So lighthouse down the bottom is the bottom lights. It's the housing around those plus the mirrors. So this is combinations of colour schemes around the, the mirrors and the light housings. So you can go through a few different options to change the colours of each mixing and matching between a few different options, as you can see. Then, engine setup, we've got the 28460 or the 29520, so 460 horsepower, 520 horsepower. Sunshades and latches, this is the door handles on the side and sunshade. Again, we go through options of chromed, colour matched with sunshade like plastic, chromed, colour matched, and back off again. Then fenders, we go for a load of plastic options. And then the, the design colour options, then the primary colour options, then back to standard. Then glasses and antennas, we have got antenna left, antenna right, both. Slightly darker tint, same with the antennas, slightly darker tint. Even darker tint with antennas and then back to standard. So a few different options. Let's hop in. Horn. Lights. A few different options on there. I went for the bar on the top, the beacon, strobe. Goes up to 75 miles per hour. It's a nice looking lorry actually. It's weird because again. We've had a few different versions, types of lorries like this, and I 
honestly thought we'd already had this. But then when I went through the options and saw the beak and I thought, I'm not sure I remember that as an option. But it's weird as well, the lizard logo on the front there looks a little bit like the, the Vauxhall badge. When I first saw it, I thought, wow, a Vauxhall lorry, that's interesting. Interior. Nice and detailed. So that's the mods from yesterday, the 6th of July. Now moving on to the 7th of July. We start off with the garden bed. This is an interesting one. This is by, did I say that was by? That was by Agro Tonio, that one. <clears throat> so the garden bed, 3.36 megabytes download, nine slots on console. This is by Bartson V3. It is a shed, an outdoor gazebo-esque type thing with a bed in it. I suppose for those countries hot climates where if it is really really hot indoors sometimes it's nice to get outside in the summer and maybe sleep outdoors without the risk of rain pouring down on top of you we come into here we can remove the duvet put the duvet back it is a sleep trigger as well um something a bit different you'll find it under placeables and farmhouses one thousand to buy so, just something a little bit different, isn't it? Also by Bartson V3 today, we've got this, which is a little bit different, and I like this a lot. This is the shed with modification function. This is 20.44 megabytes download, 20 slots on console. This and the previous one are both seasons ready. Like I said, this is by Bartson V3. So we've got the shed as is. If I come up to here and press the circle, we've got lighting inside. Very nice. But then if we come to this side, all the way down the side here, we've got a load of options. So if we go to the first one, we can have gutters on or off, so we can remove the gutters if we want to remove the gutters. If we go to the next one, you have to come off of each one. If you go between them, sometimes it doesn't come up. If we come off onto the next one, we can have rusted metal effect around the side, or not. I'm going to leave it on for a second, because the next one gives you standard roof, or roof with rusty sheeting. So you can change the whole look of it, make it look much older and rusted, just by changing a couple of those options, we go back to that and take the rusted sheeting off, put a regular roof on, I think. There we go. Next one is remove side metal, so you can have it as a more drive-through shelter, so you don't have to have the side on if you don't want to. And then we've got remove concrete floor, so then you can landscape it, colour it to match wherever you want, or you can have the concrete floor if you'd rather have a concrete floor, that again, entirely your choice. Then the last one, we can have IV or not. At the moment there's no IV, or we can show the IV if you want. So a bit of modularity in that you can really mix and match how you want it to look. So you can change the whole style of it just by flicking a few switches. Rather than having to do it in the menu and pick a particular type, you can change it as you go. You could simulate the IV growing over a period of time or the building getting rusty over a period of time or whatever you want to do. It's entirely up to you. So that's the lizard, oh, sorry, the shed with modification function by Bartson V3. Moving on. We've got this. The Lizard KS1000 by Sariga56. 5.07 megabytes download. Six slots on console. It is a shovel, bucket-esque type thing you can use for cleaning out your feed areas. Whatever areas you want to clean out with it. Uh, I'm pretty sure this will take pretty much everything. I think it's under miscellaneous. We'll have a look in here first. Yeah, pretty much everything. 1,400 to buy, 1,000 litre capacity. We can change the main cards at any one of those three. What's great about this as well, which I like, is when we hook up to it, we've got raise and lower, L1 and circle. So you go along, scoop up with you want to scoop up. But then we've got options too. Tilt for tip, but then we've also got, so if you just want to, you know, just getting the controls right. So for unloading, but then we've also got, he says, this option. That we can raise the whole thing up if I raise it as well. So if you want to tip into a trailer or something a bit higher, we can raise the whole up and then tip it. So that one will tip back. But yeah, so we can put into trailers or something higher or yeah, whatever you want. I just thought it was a really interesting little design. I like the, the idea behind that. The movement of all of that you could probably put logs and stuff in it tip it back like that and then maybe not have to worry about them falling out on the way to wherever you're going 
I don't think it's got straps, it doesn't have no. It is just a bucket. But there you go. So that is the KS1000 by Sariga56. Next we've got this. This is a beast. I thought the scaling was off, in all honesty, to start off with. This is the Lizard RF180. This is by Agrotonio. It's five slots, 5.38 megabytes download. And this is a plow. It's a, it's a, what was it called? Not a slice plow, something along those lines, wasn't it? Uh, knife roller. A <laughs> slice plow. It's a knife roller. And I thought, that when I got it, that, that scale's way off. But they look like lorry wheels to me. So if they are lorry wheels, the scale is probably right. It is huge. And it is a plow with knives, with a few different options available on it. Big old bit of kit. So you'll find it under tools and plows. It's 28,000 to buy. Uh, it doesn't actually say the width of it. Not on here it doesn't, but on the mod tub it says, on the website, 7 metres. 7 metres wide. I think that's right. Requires 180 horsepower, but it runs at 11 miles per hour. Which is pretty good. I mean, some run at 10, 12, you know, so it's not like it's running at 20 miles an hour or something like that. Options available. We can change the main colour to anything on that palette. Rim colour, anything on that palette. Now, that doesn't become relevant just yet. Design colour changes the end caps. Let's go with pink so it really stands out. Then we've got hitch position one, two, three. Doesn't make a huge amount of difference, but it might give you a bit of adjustment here and there. Then we've got wheel setup standard. You can pull it as a roller or for transport, you can have wheels for transport. And as you can see, the rim colour is the rims on the wheels for transport. So that's what I went for because I was, you know, I worry about as you're pulling it along, causing damage as you roll. So, like I say, it, st it still looks very big. But L1 a circle, drops it down. And away we go. L1 and triangle. We can still create fills. It is a plow. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Big old bit of kit. So, that's the Lizard RF 180 by Agro Tonyo. Let's just stop there, raise it up, and disconnect. Next to the mods, we have got the Lizard N022. This is, I'm sure it says it's a rare Polish, is it Polish? Yeah, a rare Polish fertiliser spreader. We've got a few of these uh, different ones. This is a 350 litre fertiliser and lime sprayer, or lime sprayer. Let's hook up to it. So, that's what it looks like. 350 litres, the N022. Again, I thought we'd already had this one. Well, the, the numbers ring a bell. I don't know why. 5.34 megabytes download. Eight slots on console. This is by Listy U. You will find it under fertiliser technology. 1,350 to buy. It runs at nine miles per hour. And it will take fertiliser or lime. We can change the main colour to anything on that palette. And you can have it a spread width of eight metres. Nine, uh, sorry, eight, 10, 12, 14 it's your spread width. I think I went for 14. I'm pretty sure I put lime in it. Uh, we can open the cover for filling. L1 and left of the D-pad. I'm just going to get through that 350 litres. Pretty quick. But if you're on a small farm doing small fields, and you don't mind going a little bit backwards and forwards here and there, there you go, you're empty. But there you go. It is rare, apparently. So that's the N022 by Listy U. Next, we have got this. This is the self made forest trailer by, I would say Michael, but it might be, it's probably Michael, but I'm, uh, Michael LS. It is 1.08 megabytes download, one slot on console. Square tube in construction. It does have straps, which can be done manually or from in cab. It's for putting logs on. I suppose you might even get away with getting a couple of small pallets on there, possibly, and strapping them down. Maybe a couple of fertilizer bags, but it is designed for logs. So you'll find this under forestry. 
1000 to buy. We can change the rim colour to anything on that palette. Main colour changes the rest of it. And does exactly what it says on the tin. So, the last of the mods for today, and these are really interesting, I mean, very curious. Uh, we have a new entry in the charts from North Modding Company. Uh, this is the Bright. The future is bright. Sorry, couldn't help myself. This is the Bright X20. Now, these are excavators. And they are, I mean, it's, the, it's more the transportation about them that fascinates me. These are incredible. Now, if you go onto the Mod Hub website or on the Mod Hub when you go to download it, there's a whole load of information that North Modding Company have put on there about the company. Norwegian company uh, by brothers Christian and Ingebret Soyland. And anyway, I'm not going to read all that out, but um, we have got two. There's the wheeled version and the tracked version. And they're also interesting in their operat operating procedure, I guess, at how they work. Now, these are 44.73 megabytes download. Each vehicle is 24 slots for the first one. Then we've got dollies. So you've got the dolly here which as you're going to see attaches onto the bucket or the bucket attaches on whichever way you want to enjoy a look at it. The Dolly X20 is one slot and then you've got this one here on the back for the tracked one because obviously you can lift up the front on the Dolly but the tracked one, you know, you're still going to cause a lot of damage. 3D tracks, very nice looking too. Um, but this secondary Dolly is two slots which is designed for the 20T. Now obviously on console, Broit, They've had to switch around because of the, you know, the rules, so it's Tiorb, but it is it's bright. Um, we'll have a look at where you can find them first, then we'll have a look at the... Yeah, the configurations have got me a bit puzzled. Now, it could be, again, I'm assuming there's going to be some stuff coming out for this. North Modding Company do it a little bit like Black Sheet Modding do. I've had a look through the mod tab to see if I can find something. Now, these don't say anything about jigsaw puzzle pieces, which will become a little bit more relevant in a moment. We've got the X20 and the X20T. So, 28,500, 37,500. We can have bucket, no powered wheels, and that's an interesting one. I've got one up at the main store. That's not powered at all. Cannot drive. You have to move it using the dollies. So, it's got no ability to drive itself. Then you've got attacher with no powered wheels. Then you've got bucket with powered wheels, hang on, and then attacher with powered wheels. Beacon configuration, yes or no, you put a beacon on top, and then big warning triangle, yes or no, the big warning triangle does cover up the tube, the Broit logo on the back. Now, what I'm saying about whether there's going to be new stuff coming, if you do it with attacher rather than bucket, I couldn't get it attached to the dollies at all. So I'm wondering if they're going to have a whole pack of extra things that are going to come with these. Now, the bucket will pick up all of those things anyway. I know a lot of people say, what's the point of excavators? We can't dig the ground in game, so why do we have them? Some farms do use these for the movement of sugar beet and well, all sorts of stuff. So like I say, I don't know whether we're going to get some more stuff coming. I'm sure someone in the comments will let me know and say, look, yes, if you go onto their website on the mod type or whatever it is, they're, they're, there's stuff in the works. I just couldn't find anything. I did try and hook up to a front loader tool a telehandler tool and a wheel loader tool just to see if they were compatible and I couldn't get any of them to hook up. So that's why I'm saying I think something will be in the works coming for these. Then we go to the X20T, which is the tracked version. So standard or attacher. Again, I could get the attacher to hook up, but it does with the bucket because the bucket has the hole in it, which is what attaches to the dolly. The bucket is 1,000 litres. Beacon configuration, yes or no. Then we've got X20T Original or Fast. I went for the Fast, which goes at 6 miles an hour. Then Warning Triangle, yes or no. Now this will move under its own steam, which also brings us to a couple of other interesting things. Just bear with me a second. So this here is the um, non-powered. So this doesn't have powered wheels. If I jump in it, and let's start it up. It can't drive. It is literally, it gets moved into place and then your crane operations will work, but that will not drive forwards or backwards 
it's not powered or the wheels aren't powered in any way shape or form now like i said i have also tried hooking up to various different buckets with the attachers um, so what we'll do is we'll get back to the other ones and let's have a look so let's start with the x20 i've gone for the powered wheel version but the other thing to note about this as well there's no steering so again whilst this can move forwards and backwards in place on a site or wherever you're going to use it you can't steer it so it needs to be moved into position wherever you want it using the dollies then you can drive forwards and backwards and then you've got the movement of the crane obviously for whatever it is you're digging but there's no other movement than that which is interesting so what we're going to do is i'm going to you know what i'm going to do i'm going to jump in this first Let's move the arm. I'm going to go that way. So I lower the thing back down to the ground like that. Then we jump to that. And we're going to disconnect not the dolly but that. And I can drive the dolly out the way. So when you want to attach the dolly, as long as the bucket's almost in place, come up to it, press X, and it will give you the option to attach. The chains come on and it's all kind of in place. So I'm going to detach that, move the dolly out the way. And then we jump in, side up. So we've got L1, right stick up and down. Right stick side to side. So we've got all of our rotation up and down and rotation the crane. Now, like I say, this is the powered wheel version, so I can go forwards. I can go backwards, but I can't steer. Even like the details of the chains, the chain drives there for the axle. How cool is that? <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Um, lighting, horn, so our rotation, then under R1 we've got that movement, then L1, R1, we've got that movement. So a combination of various different movements, and we have got the function of our crane. Sorry excavator crane do apologize l1 and x opens that up our options for and we've got beacon on top there that's our first person there's not one next to the bucket or anything like that so it's outside or inside l1 and x i say very interesting and fascinating with the design so that's the x20 um, the X20T is the tracked version, so we have to be on this and on this for transportation. Let's just start that up, disconnect that. So once hooked up, off we go to drive wherever we want to go. It does mean that you're not, you don't require a low loader necessarily. You could use a low loader if you want. But it does mean you can get to your sights a little bit quicker, obviously. So we'll do the same here. Just going to hop out. Let's adjust that arm. We'll go like that. To drop that down into place. Let's go to about there. Then we'll disconnect this. Make sure I do the right one. I'm going to do that one, move that other way. So now we're on the back cradle. Hop in. Then we need to detach uh, just X, I think. Or is it? There we go. X detaches from that. Let's move that up, start the engine. And we drive off of the dolly. And off we go. Now we're going to go back onto the dolly, we back up. We hop onto it, and we're given the option to attach, press X, and we're attached to the dolly and we're good to go. X to detach, off we come. The beauty of the X20T is it is directional because it's on tracks, so it gives you a little bit more movement and options available. The actual excavator itself, the functions are exactly the same with regard to arm movement. Like I say, the, the 20T, I've gone for the fast version, which goes 60, 60. Six, can you imagine it's going down at 60 miles an hour? But six miles an hour? 
pretty good. And it's a nice small excavator as well. It doesn't take up a huge amount of room. Nice long boom length. Very interesting bits of kit. Very interesting bits of kit. So, I think that's it. That's the Broit slash Tube by North Modding Company. And that is it for the mods for today. No maps today, thankfully. <laughs> um, I hope you found this useful and informative in some way, shape or form. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.